Welcome to K. Keith Photographer's Digital Images Techniques and Tips for the Novice Photographer. And now, coming at you almost live from Kansas City, USA, here's your host, Ken Keith. Hi, and welcome back to our new Digital Images show. Now, I have to apologize for the last one. Uh, the first one that we did in this series, it did run a little long and uh, a little longer than I had intended. We still didn't get to cover everything, so I did break it down into uh, two. And I hope you continue to follow with us on this if you're interested in HDR, especially using HDR Express from Unified Color with uh, Photoshop Elements. And there's several important things that we need to go over. So I've uh, opened up HDR Express here and um, I added three files, a bracketed series, uh, that uh, one of these that you saw yesterday, as a matter of fact. And uh, we're just going to go ahead. Uh, we want to check Align Source Images. Now, uh, we're going to look at uh, these different images uh, individually, and uh, it will illustrate for you uh, precisely the importance of using a good steady tripod. But uh, let's go on to this now. Uh, I will say that the merging and the deghosting in HDR Express is pretty good. It's not great. Uh, if you have um, uh, no luck, for example, in getting your uh, ghosting artifacts removed with uh, this setting, try the other two. I don't think you'll see a whole lot of difference, but certainly you can go ahead and experiment with that. There's no harm done, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and merge these guys out. And while these are loading, just want to thank you once again, uh, those of you in the local user group for Photoshop Elements, and those of you that are joining us on Vimeo and YouTube, we appreciate you dropping by. Okay, now um, as we mentioned in the, uh, the, the last tutorial here, uh, what you just saw was an animation basically uh, that gives you an idea of all the image information that you've, you've captured uh, with your bracketed group. Uh, you can play it again anytime and uh, uh, you can go up into your file and your preferences. If you don't want to see the animation, that's fine. I leave it on. I, I like it personally myself, but that's that's up to you. Uh, also, if I didn't mention it, and I don't think it did in the, in the last video, that the light gray box here that contains your histogram, you see that has a range of 8 EV, or stops or exposure values, and that is basically all you can see uh, with an average monitor. So uh, that histogram is telling you what you can see and what is outside uh, the monitor's range. That's why we a tone map to convert. And you can see here that just a little bit of the shadow detail is uh, clipped or on the outside and that would be places in the image like this. And we've just about really got all the highlight information that we want all around here. Uh, and depending on the what you're looking for, uh, how you want to preserve things in highlights or shadows, uh, generally the first the default is midtone priority. Uh, and uh, but you can start anywhere and once again you can go through this exercise as many times as you like in different settings to see what works best for you and um, you want to keep an eye on your histogram. Use these three sliders as you, as you like and, and watch your histogram and see what you're, um, what you're doing here. Now I made um, a small change in brightness and as I did that then I started to clip these highlights. I got all the shadows. I'm going to pull that back a bit and recover some more of my highlights 
with this slider I've got them all there and uh, move my shadow slider slightly you play around with these just a little bit and I basically have everything that I want there and then um, I'm going to next uh, um, go to the styles menu and these these are your style presets and uh, if you uh, remember from the last one I picked the one that's called grunge as a starting point and you have all these sliders here uh, you know we talked a little bit about warmth and tint you do have a white balance tool that you can use for color corrections if you like or if you want to tweak that a little bit and I added a little more warmth in here on that one and you also have still your sliders and uh, you see here from our histogram uh, it's uh, far outside uh, this area here that's telling us that we have lost a lot of our shadow information so uh, we can begin to, to pull all this uh, together a little more until we get what we like and you can use a black point you see what that does I'm going to dial that back just a little bit because I do want to see uh, this detail under here so I'm not going to go through these controls uh, once again because uh, we, we've already done that uh, but I did want to mention that let's say you want to start with grunge uh, for a series but um, a series of images but you decide that you like to make some alterations you know just to, to fine-tune it with the different sliders over here and then uh, you want to apply those to all your images well then you could just go ahead and click the little plus sign here and this gives you uh, a way to save those uh, settings into your own preset you can just go ahead and name it up here like viaduct bridge preset uh, if I want to uh, retain also the tone mapping presets uh, I can do that and uh, whatever I want to do here and click OK and now and it will appear now down here uh, with, with with whatever name that you have uh, down in the preset style group so that's a, that's a pretty clever way and a quick way if you're applying basically the same type of images or want to get at least a starting point to a batch of images okay all right now I'm going to go ahead and click out of this and we'll see you over in Photoshop elements okay now back in the elements and uh, as I may have mentioned I am using elements 9 uh, if you have an older version uh, when you can afford it I would recommend uh, upgrading to 9 it has a lot of very useful features in it all right now the end result uh, from yesterday was uh, this particular uh, viaduct uh, bridge image uh, with uh, the way I wanted to uh, present it uh, with a background that was uh, made here in elements uh, I have uh, all my highlight information I have information underneath this heavy shadow and it's uh, quite sharp but let's back up just a little bit now and uh, we'll talk about uh, using the tripod and its importance uh, I don't want to bore you with this but it's really uh, significant I'm going to start out with this image right here uh, that was shot um, at one of our uh, arboretums in the Kansas City area and the camera was on a tripod you see it's a nice uh, bright sunny day and you can see the direction of the uh, the sunlight here from the shadows and all and I'm going to do two things here the first I'm going to open up the uh, what you would call the normal exposure 
and uh, let's say let's do the plus two stop exposure and we'll send it over into full photo edit and these are I'm going to do select all these are uh, Nikon raw files and um, we're not going to do anything to them we're just going to go ahead and open these images up Now the whole purpose of uh, what I'm going to do here is um, a way to evaluate your, your images prior to uh, sending them to the HDR Express software. And let me just go ahead and, and uh, grab the normal one and I'm going to hold down my shift key and drag and drop the two stop over exposed one on top of the normal one. And when I get over here the, the, the top layer is highlighted. I'm going to change that blend mode from normal to difference. Okay. And I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit here. Now I'm not worried about the movement of the water here. It's a uh, water falling back and uh, that's fine uh, as things maybe go a little out of register as you get some of this this flow in different places, but what I'm looking at is the extreme detail here on the statuary, and uh, there's a lot of uh, information here. You can see that the camera did not move at at all. Uh, these uh, striations here on the socks and the uh, the little problems of the casting itself, uh, it's all lined up. It's just it's just great. All right. So uh, that's how we're going to evaluate our bracketed series of images for movement of the camera, or uh, you know, as you know, if you're shooting handheld, or even if you're shooting on a tripod for very long exposure, say for a night exposure. All right now, I've opened it up. I've opened up the three bracketed exposures of the viaduct bridge. And this is the once again the quote unquote normal exposure and I'm going to drag and drop the uh, two stops over exposed one on top changing my making sure the top layer uh, is highlighted and I'm changing my blend mode to difference and I'm going to zoom in I think you'll be able to, to, to see this okay, uh, even though uh, the video compression and your, the way you're seeing it on your monitor may be a little different. Okay, um, well, here it is. Now you see um, uh, that there is movement. Uh, this was taken handheld. Uh, it's a bright sunny day. I've got my shutter speed up, uh, and I'm also shooting uh, an auto bracketed sequence and I have the camera set to continuous so it's firing uh, rapidly and that's going to uh, help minimize uh, it, uh, this problem but it doesn't eliminate it and you can see here now that in, on, that the light pole the divergence here and where uh, the, the light the head of the light uh, uh, is uh, the one that's um, blue is uh, touching but just below the one that's yellow so we can see that there's uh, uh, some misalignment there I'm going to go ahead and and undo that I'm now I'm going to drag the, the two stop underexposed one uh, over on top of the normal exposed one let's change that to difference and uh, zoom in here for you and now you see that it there's also misalignment there and we're talking about the uh, the one that's rendered in blue and this time it's uh, partially touching it but also it's just on uh, the blue is just on top of that one so in the 
the two stop overexposed, it's touching down here. The two stop underexposed, it's touching down here. Alright, let's undo this and back out. Okay, here's the final resulting uh, image uh, from the, the merging and running it all through HDR Express and finishing it up in, in the Noiseware and, and uh, Photoshop Elements. We'll zoom again on uh, the light pole area. Uh, it is, uh, has been merged. Uh, you see the, just a tiny bit of, uh, of uh, ghosting there where it, it kind of missed and there are some little artifacts for some reason now uh, you, you have some areas of red and green and these are artifacts from the merging process if um, I had shot on a tripod and there had been no movement of the camera you would not have seen this so uh, it's a very small portion of this picture I didn't fix it uh, you, you definitely could go into elements and um, I get rid of the red and green there and there's a couple of other ways of doing that kind of stuff you also see just a little bit of red fringing here on the light pole so I think this uh, demonstrates quite well uh, the necessity of shooting on a tripod uh, absolutely whenever possible even if you're you're optimally braced uh, and you have you can still uh, have just minor movements of your hand uh, during those exposures, even though the shutter speed's going fast, so get on a tripod whenever possible. I don't want to. It's I know it's a dead horse, and I don't want to beat it to death, but that is certainly something of significance. All right. Now the last thing that I wanted to mention as we finish up here is um, that uh, there's no provision in HDR Express for what you call single shot HDR. And uh, that is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, you'd probably want to call that instead pseudo HDR. In uh, Photoshop CS5, you can do HDR toning. You can also do HDR toning to single images in Photomatix Pro. Uh, but you're not gaining dynamic range. All you're doing is applying an HDR style to your photograph. So um, once again, HDR Express, it, it, it doesn't work. There, there's no provision. So uh, that's going to cover it, I think, for now. I'll be uh, glad to, to uh, get your feedback. Just email me at bigcat2 at gmail.com. Uh, if you don't remember that, so that's, um, that information is at the end of the video. You can catch me at Kenneth Keith on Facebook and my photo blog, kkeithphoto.wordpress.com. So that's about it for now. Take care. Thanks for watching and we'll talk again.